Maria. It's Maria. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge and today I want to be sharing with you my personal statement as an example. So I think the first thing to bear in mind with personal statements is that there is no perfect personal statement out there. They're very much individual to you and there's no single way to go about them. That being said though, some are better than others and that often comes down to how you structure them and the sort of points you decide to include. Before we dive into mine, I just want to say that I used this three years ago when I applied to med school. So I applied to four universities for medicine, since there's a limit to how many you can apply to, and um, one non-medical university. So I applied to the University of Cambridge, Imperial College London, the University of Glasgow and the University of Birmingham. Um, and then as my fifth choice, I applied to UCL for Biological Sciences. I got an offer from every medical school I applied to, as well as my backup choice. Um, so let's delve in straight into it. At a glance, you can tell that my personal statement isn't very long. They're really strict about this. It's only 47 lines. So the part I'm highlighting here is my introduction. This should convey your motivation for why you want to study the course. This is especially important for medicine. It doesn't have to be a really profound reason, but it has to be personal to you. The next section is from my work experience. As you're going to see, I talk a lot about my work experiences, which I think is really useful because it shows that you have a clear idea of what medicine is actually like. And it's also a really great opportunity to reflect on. So here I'm talking about spending time in trauma and orthopedics. I mentioned some technical language in the case of an ORIF, which is an open reduction internal fixation. If I had more words, I would have actually explained what that was rather than using the abbreviation, but make sure you do know what you're talking about, especially for an interview. But what is especially important to do is to then go and reflect on what you've seen. So in this case, I talk about how the junior doctors were really encouraged to learn and they worked as part of a team. And that shows that I appreciate the skills that a doctor actually needs. Um, it also shows awareness of the structure of medicine and how um, there are different levels of people in terms of experience and how it's important for them to work together. I then go on to link this to a book. Um, so that's Adam Kay's This Is Going To Hurt, which I think is really good because it shows that you've read around the course, but also you're thinking about linking things together in your head. So here I talk about another work experience, but this time in a completely different side of medicine. So I spent time at a GP practice, uh, so that's primary care, and I saw how the GP interacted with a patient who had experienced domestic violence. So this was completely different, but I could then reflect on it and show that I understood what skills the doctor had. So in the case here, it's the doctor's patience, empathy and trust. Um, and I then go on to talk about the doctor-patient relationship, um, which is really important and it's good to show um, an awareness about this. I then go on to uh, reflect on it further and link it to another book that I had read, which in this case is Graham Easton's The Appointment. So this is a really good book if you haven't read it. It's about his experiences as a GP. Um, and what I really hone in on is the communication skills that are needed and um, reflecting on how they were portrayed in the book and then how they actually worked in practice and whether I saw them on my placement. The next thing I go on to talk about is a completely different healthcare system. It's actually a foreign one. So I was really lucky in how I got to spend two weeks on an oncology placement in Bulgaria because um, that's where my family's from. And so I compared um, the practice here compared to abroad 
Um, and that was a really good opportunity to reflect on our own shortcomings, but also in how the NHS is better in other ways. So here I talk about patient autonomy um, and how it wasn't really as emphasised in Bulgaria as it is here. Um, I also talk about waiting times and um, I reflect on how those were shorter um, and the doctors seemed less overworked. Um, so yeah, it's really important to be able to reflect on that. Even if you don't have um, a foreign work experience, you can do these this in other ways, but it shows that you have um, an awareness of the structure of the NHS and how medicine works in the UK, which makes you stand out as, a, as an applicant. This is often really underappreciated, but volunteering can be one of the most valuable experiences when applying for medicine. So here I talk about how I spent time at a care home over the course of six months um, and I would uh, get involved in looking after the patients, talking to them and also helping with feeding. Um, and it shows that I have an awareness of how to interact with patients, some of them who had dementia um, and the skills that I also gained from that experience. The next section is really a bit of a way to link the previous section to the next one. So um, it's also used as an opportunity to showcase my knowledge of how the healthcare system works and the main problems that we are dealing with at the moment. Um, but overall, it's, it's just genuinely to link things so it doesn't seem as clunky. It's slightly ironic talking about the potential for a pandemic about a year and a half before the pandemic actually hit. But, you know, we move um, still a bit odd. <laughs> so the next thing is about the essay competitions that I entered over the course of sick form. This is very much a personal section. It depends on what you've done. Um, if you've done something that's quite cool, definitely worth mentioning, even if it's not super related to what you want to do as long as you can reflect on it and explain that you've developed skills in the process and somehow link it to your degree it's definitely worth talking about so here I talk about the Cambridge Velocot essay prize and the Corpus Christi legal reasoning prizes which I won um, and yeah they were really useful for me developing my time management skills as well as my writing skills and in Cambridge, because it's such an essay-heavy medical programme, this was something that I think made me stand out more as an applicant compared to other people. But the main point is you need to make sure you've reflected on it. You keep have to coming back to why that makes you a better applicant in the first place. The section here is about my extracurriculars. So things that aren't related to the degree at all. So I talk about being a coach of the school netball team and being a house officer, which basically meant I led students from seven year groups and basically just ran some cool, fun activities over the course of a year. Um, I also talk about uh, teaching a GCSE student in chemistry. Um, and I talk about dance and my Duke of Edinburgh expeditions as well. The main point of this is to show that you're a well-rounded applicant and that you have other interests beyond your degree. It's also a really good opportunity to show that you've developed certain skills. So in the case of being a netball team coach, I showed that I developed my communication and leadership skills in the case of being a house officer, I showed that I was good at organising things and public speaking. And in helping somebody with their GCSEs, that shows that you can listen and you can teach. That's especially useful in medicine where you're going to have to be teaching doctors who are more junior than you, even if you don't go into academia. The next section I talk about is science and my interest in science. I think this is especially important if you're applying to a course which has a key distinction between preclinical and clinical medicine, 
because they have an especially big emphasis on the basic science behind it. I was really lucky to have been given this opportunity to uh, collaborate with these scientists in the first place. So I really made a point of emphasizing this and then linking it to the potential to do research in the future. That's something Cambridge is really keen on, especially my director of studies in first year. So I feel like this section would have made a good impression. So the final bit here is just a conclusion. So that kind of re-emphasizes why I want to go into medicine. Um, so I talk about the impact on the lives of others, but also the potential for lifelong learning. Granted, it is quite naive and cliche, but it worked and it just rounded off the whole thing.